Awesome. Adam, uh, Adam M. Uh, my, yes. my roommate in college, uh, Dude. my friend now of, uh, 10 years longer than that. 12 yeah, years, 13 at least. years. Yeah. Like, yeah. uh, former bandmates, yeah. former leaders together, just the whole nine yards. Um, yeah. awesome husbands club. I'm sure we're in somewhere. I'm just kidding. I don't know. I so. <laughs> um, awesome, man. Well, Hey, yeah. Just to, for people listening, uh, yeah, we've yeah. known each other for a long time and, our cre- our friendship journey has been as long as we talked about, but our creative journeys have kind of uh, aligned in different ways uh, recently, probably the last two, three, four years. Um, yeah. And I think it's been really cool. But you also, too, you were there at the beginning when I started this photo journey and like shooting yes. shoes and guitars and just mm. and not even good you know it's like playing around yeah, high quality stuff yeah, yeah man <laughs> Pl- playing around with my casio and so i wanted to have you on man and just kind of hear yeah. a little bit about your story now that uh you've gone full time as what i would consider creative you know uh, you know in all sense of the word maybe i'm a, a digital media person uh communications <laughs> person and one you're doing it in your 30s uh, you're doing it yeah. in with uh two babies and a wife and a, uh, and a house payment. Yes. Um, yeah. and yeah. you know, I think those, even just saying those, those are a lot of the barriers that a lot of people put up when it is time to go full time or pursue their dream, or just even in your case, pursue something new that maybe for you, it didn't feel risky. I don't, I don't know. Um, so all that to say, before we get into that, uh, for the people that don't know, like, I want to hear how you would introduce yourself now. What's what's the joy ethic, Adam McGuffey? Oh man, dude, that's a great question. Um, first of all, thanks for having me on the show, dude. I, I so appreciate it, Adam. So thank you. Anytime. Um, um my my name's Adam. I <laughs> am a dad. I'm a husband. Um, I live in Oregon, uh, in Newburgh, Oregon, like a little small town outside of Portland, and. Um, yeah, we're raising two kids. Uh, we have Declan, who's a two-year-old. Maeve is uh, four, going on five months now. And just trying to figure out life, just like everybody else, trying mm-hmm. to get through a, a pandemic. Yeah. Now we're in the winter of a pandemic. So it's, you know, it's in Oregon. So it's not super sunny most of the days. <laughs> it's just taking it day by day, man. Do yoga, try to get outside, go for a walk. Is If there's a break in the clouds, you know, yeah. try to get out there. But I, yeah, I uh, have a business called Joy Ethic. It's a creative agency and uh, we help organizations uh, build community between uh, the organization and their kind of constituents, the people that, that mm. make them up. So uh, we do that in digital ways and we do it in kind of three primary ways with branding, with websites and with storytelling. And when I say storytelling, I'm talking about anything with photos and, and video. So that's awesome. Oh. Uh, yeah, largely solo, and I feel like the the whole thing wouldn't have happened without Adam Mason. So uh, <laughs> I the kind of origin story is like I was like a like a pastor person. Actually, Adam and I we worked the same job out of college. Like I worked it first, and then you worked it like at right right after me, yep. and then we were like, yeah, this isn't working. Uh, we got to do something else. So it's true. Um, we uh, I my you moved to DC yep. and I uh, moved across country and just, I went to seminary and, and you know, met Kelly and, and got married and finally made it to Oregon. I ran out of highway and uh, yeah, but I, my, my whole journey, like I, I was like doing this like pastor church work thing. Um, and back in 2017 decided to, to leave that world. Wasn't sure what the next step was. Yeah. And that world represented like half of my income at the time. And I like sort of like resigned on a Sunday. And then the, the next Friday, I found out that we were pregnant with our first kid, uh, which was like, oh, man, if I had known, probably wouldn't have resigned. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's probably good I didn't know because I, uh, I, yeah, it, it wasn't the, the right thing for me. So we kind of went on a journey and like six, seven months in, mm. the other half of my income uh, went, went away. I, uh, I was working at this uh, local university and they had a, a departmental like shift. The figurehead left and a new person came in, was kind of realigning things. And like, we, we don't need that. We need that. We don't need that. And I kind of got picked on the, I, we, I don't think we need that role anymore. Wow. 
So we we're in this season of like, oh man, well, what do, I got to do something. I got a kid on the way, you know, like, what do I have? Yeah. You know, uh, I've been kind of had a little bit of side hustle going just a few freelance projects and basically it's what 2021 now. So from then until now, we've been uh, just kind of on that journey of learning how in the world to run a business. Oh, I have a business. Okay. Well, that's, you know, that was kind of the moment you realize that you have a business yeah. and it's not just this thing you're doing until the next job comes along. Mm -hmm. But for us, we, uh, you know, we had a couple of opportunities come up to kind of go back into the pastoring world a couple of years ago. And uh, at that point, we weren't ready to go full time with with the business. Kelly was teaching, which was helping helping our family yeah. in terms of like business uh, uh, benefits and things like that. But we were in a, a moment of just trying to, to figure out like, OK, like, are we going to go back into that world? It was going to require a move across country. And we finally decided, look, like if these folks who don't really know me that well are willing to take a shot on me, yeah. like if I should be willing to take a shot on myself, mm. you know, like. I'm the kind of I, like I show up to work every day. I work hard, you know, yeah. uh, and now these days I pick on myself and say that I'm like I'm the best boss that I've ever had and I'm the worst employee. <laughs> you know, I'm always wanting like time off to take my kids to the park and all this stuff, you know, like, yeah. So it, but we kind of figured out in the middle of that, you know, if they're if they're going to take a shot on us, we'll take a shot on us. And we just we've kind of went for it. And it's not like uh, it's been perfect. We've man, we make tons of mistakes like any anybody else you know yeah. it's uh but we're figuring it out the more you stick with it the more you you kind of start to to figure out so talking with you has helped me a ton for sure in the middle of that and be like just stick with it it'll work out yeah it'll work out. no i mean uh it's been it's you have been the closest person that i know that um you know closer than even like my mentees right where i have like an intimate relationship where they call me crying and they're like, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do. You know, all this kind of stuff. Um, yeah. And and I've got to see you at every step or usually get that email that's like, hey, or that text that's like, hey, what do you do for this? Or how does that work? Or whatever. Yeah. Um, you were our editor for a while when I wanted to take a chance. And, uh, and so that was really cool. You know, just learning like workflow, deadlines, all that kind of stuff. And then for you on the practical side of like, you're going to edit a lot of photos. You're going to learn. You know? <laughs> that was a, like, this is a football moment for me. You know, you were like, this is a football, you know? And I was like, okay, I thought I knew what a football, I don't I had no idea what a photo was. So you, man, That's so you, you taught me so yeah. much. Thank no, you. No, no, absolutely. It's, uh, it's funny. So yeah, getting to see you, what, uh, you know, as far as the creative storytelling, like, you yeah. know, and, and some of the side, I didn't even necessarily know the details of, but like, how did you get some experience in in those three facets that you now have in Joy Ethic? Um, yeah, you know, because I know you, you like as you left the pastor stuff, you're at a working at a seminary. But even there, uh, were you doing all three of those things? Were you just helping with comms? Were you just a good employee? Like, how did you gain the experience that you have now to where you can show up and be like, OK, I'm going to make a branding video or branding package for a restaurant or yeah. a church or whatever? Yeah, no, that's a that's a great question. So I. Uh, was always sort of in, in the creative side of things. Like I was a music major in college. I, I got my, like the job that we shared, like was a, like a worship creative arts thing. Yeah. And uh, I had worked on that side of in, in churches uh, all the time, which really isn't at the level that you need to be, to be professional uh, and do this sort of thing full time. It, large, I would say in, in the size of churches I was working sure. in. Right. Um, so, um, I, when I got out here and I got this job at the seminary, uh, a guy named Lauren Kearns, uh, who's my boss there, noticed that I had this creative side and he gave me a camera, which at the time I couldn't afford. It was like a Nikon D5000 nice. or something like that. And it was like, go shoot photos, man. We'll put them on Facebook, yeah. you know, go have a good time. So I start, I started doing that and just, you know, I was just like the annoying guy with the, with the camera all the time. Like, oh, geez, Adam's shooting photos again. So I, I did that for the, whole, the time I was there, like at least the first three years uh, when I was full time there. I um, I just shot a bunch of photos and did, did a terrible job of it. The part that I uh, was kind of like imported from my pastoral uh, job was more of like the project management. And I would say like leveraging institutional resources for things yeah. uh, was good. People skills. You need people skills if you're going to be in past pastoral work. Yeah. So um uh, we went through a rebrand at the seminary and I, man, I couldn't have told you what a, a 
brand was, uh, you know, six years ago. Yeah. But it's all we talked about for several years as we were like prepping for it and trying to figure out like, OK, what's the. Uh, sorry, I got the sun came out, as you can tell <laughs> outside. First time um, of the year. <laughs> yeah, man, it's that time of the year. I got to go outside. I'll be back. Yeah, yeah. So we um, yeah, we we were going through this rebrand and a guy uh, named Rob, uh, who was a VP at the school, he was just an expert on branding and he taught uh, us at the seminary, like everything he knew, he just kind of unloaded on us as we went from uh, having the word evangelical in our name yeah. <laughs> to not <laughs> sure. having a uh, Confederate in our name, <laughs> so to speak uh, yeah. uh, as a, as a institution. So we, we kind of, I learned a ton from that process. I was kind of the project manager in the midst of that, just trying to like get institutional resources for us. So yeah. everything from like getting swag created to mailers to um, figuring out our brand rationale and, you know, like getting new signs made at the seminary, which is always cool when you see this like digital thing become like a physical object, Definitely. you know? So going through that process uh, taught me basically the framework that I, I know for, for branding and I did more research on it, but that kind of at least gave me the entry into it um, was, was my time time there at the seminary. That's so I'm awesome. super grateful for that. And then also, we have like shoot like brand on the video side of things yeah. storytelling. Um, I did cr like creative direction for videos at the seminary. They we did like an annual brand video, and again they saw that I liked that stuff, and they're like, "Well, you you run with it, Adam." So you know, helping like create scripts and come up with ideas for the video, and then working with a production company. Yeah, I just didn't have the camera in my hands. Um, and then I, you helped me learn about the camera part and I was like, well, I've got the other part. Yeah. I can just put these two things together. Uh, and then, you know, a couple of YouTube tutorials to fill in the cracks, you know, YouTube university, yeah. and then, uh, a whole bunch of just hanging on and staying patient and trying to get better and trying to get better and trying to get better. And, I love it. You know, again and again, and you just keep working at it. Yeah. And I would say like, I'm, I'm proud of the stuff that we, we can make now. Mm. Um, but it's been, a, it's definitely been a journey to get there That's awesome. for sure. And we've got a ways to go still, uh, to, to kind of tell the stories that we want to tell. That's awesome. Are the babies okay? I heard a, a baby screaming or something. Dude, that is life here. Yeah. Babies are fine. We have, a, like I said, he's a two year old. He's, it's getting close. Well, it's not getting close to lunchtime. Maybe he's getting close to snack time. He's, he is a all American boy. I love just, it. Uh, <laughs> rumbling <laughs> yeah no no screaming just yelling there's a different okay. there's a difference That's good. i think we're okay yeah. yeah yelling is good yelling is positive screaming is bad yes he's having a good time he's having he's having a good time i love that so. i love that well dude that's so cool i i think too people uh, you might even realize this now and it's not to and again people always get really weird we're not saying that Roger Deakins or Wally Fister like these amazing cinematographers are not good at what they do like they're a specialist at that thing um but at, at your level or even just somebody who wants to work for themselves and have a creative style business it's almost like i would venture to say that having that creative experience on staff project management seeing the steps and the orders and the processes mm -hmm. at least yeah. for me like that is so valuable you know and, and i would, at least for me for running your own business i would say more valuable in knowing how the, the production steps for every deliverable you have to make and like, okay, this has to happen this time. Like, and then, yeah, eventually do learn your camera and you get excited and you get creative and you push further and like all that kind of stuff. But it's like, you know, without that kind of project management or knowing the business stuff, you're, you're not just an artist, but you are an artist. But at the moment you're like, my mortgage doesn't care about my art. You know, that's how <laughs> I view most of us. Um, so you have to have, yeah. have that element of both, you know? And I think, um, that's yeah. at least in my mind and you know you having a few creative friends that you know happily chat through anything i think like that's part of getting to see you it didn't four years isn't fast but i feel like now you're finally like okay yeah i get to full throttle do what i want to do or even just try this thing and um yeah. and, it, and the process is not that short for so many people um so it's just mm -hmm. been really cool to watch um that's awesome to hear, man. Yeah, I, 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 uh, I probably wouldn't like. I, I'm trying to. I'm. I'm not really the hero in this story. Like, I'm. The, um, and I'm not that gutsy of a person. Like, I don't want to. You know. Yeah. Uh, that's good perspective. Like, though. Misrepresent myself here. Like, there were sort of like events that pushed me into taking the next step, mm. and those like you know like having your your position like downsized at your at work. Yeah. 
that's scary, man. You got a kid on the way. Yeah. Like that's suboptimal. <laughs> <laughs> that's not great. Yeah. And I remember just feeling like, dude, I'm not ready for this. Mm. Like I am not ready. For, I don't know how I'm going to make this work, yeah. you know? And that's probably a lot of the reasons we like applied for jobs and we're candidating at other churches that summer. Cause we're just like, we got to do something, you know, yeah. but finally not making a decision based on fear mm. and, uh, instead of instead choosing to head in the direction of our fears. That was really the thing that, uh, helped us find the happiness that we have, the, jo- the joy that we have. I'm not trying to be cheesy with that. I'm just saying like uh, we we realize that there's more to life than just making money. Yeah. Like let it be known. I make less money than Adam Mason does. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't talk numbers. I don't talk numbers because I think that can be a, a trap. Yeah, yeah. Uh, at some level for how I'm wired. Sure. Um, but boy, do we love our life. Yeah. And boy, do we get to spend time with our kids. You know, your kids – I'm, I'm 30, going to be 33 in May and my kids are only going to be little yeah. for a very short time. You know, hopefully I'll live into my nineties or hundreds with modern medicine, you know, yeah. take care of myself. <laughs> um, that'd be wonderful. But my kids are only going to be little for like, you know, four or five years. Totally. So getting to take my kid to the park whenever, getting to hold them when they're scared. I got to take Declan to the dentist yesterday for his annual checkup, you know, and he was, you know, nervous about it. We got to talk him through it. But getting to be there, like I grew up in a military family Mm. and I talk to my dad every day now. Love, We have an awesome relationship. I love my dad so much. But he was deployed a lot. Just that was his his job, you know, like six of my first 18 years, dad um, was deployed, uh, kind of sprinkled in there. Mm. So we knew that we like, we wanted to be close, you know, um, as a, as a family, I wanted to be around if, if I didn't have to do that, which was sort of the family trade, the military was the family trade. Sure. Um, that if, and if I had options, I would love to be able to be home, uh, in, and with the kids. So that's what we're getting to do, man. Yeah. And this, this job as cool as it is, and as much of a dream as it is to do it, um, it's way more about being able to, have the family time that we want yeah. and the flexibility that we want yeah. then you know, trying to make a million dollars, you know, by the time I'm uh, 35 or something. Yeah. So. No, hundred percent. I mean, I think that's, um, it definitely, that's the same way we've talked for years about this. Like my highest goal, I did, I couldn't quantify it this way, but I see, see it this way as like, it's flexibility, you know, for me to be able to do whatever I want, you know, and like, um, the, the parts of my job, if somebody was like, Adam, what are the things you hate about your job? For me, it's anything that's not flexible. You know, it, like I, I look up to people who can live anywhere and have like an online job. I'm like, oh, you could live anywhere. Like, okay, that'd be fun mm-hmm. just to change it up. You know, especially for us, like no kids. Um, mm-hmm. But other than that, yeah, that's the goal. And I think too, like, I'm sure for the most part, if depending on how you design the business to serve you, it's like the business serves your personal life. And as long as that business yes. is like, crossing the T's and dotting the I's and paying the bills, you would do anything, you know? And I, I mm-hmm. think that's the cool part. It's like a lot of people, this is an American thing. This is a family thing. This is a culture thing. It's like, we think job first, you know, usually like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And we never give a good answer, you know, like, and not that firefighter, lawyer, doctor, teacher aren't good professions by any means, but I do wonder, you know, like, especially millennial generation, it feels like, uh, because the barriers have been broken, we can be what we want or can have the job that can serve our personal needs and what we want. And I think like, it's, um, that's, that's the goal, you know, like I was just talking to another, yeah. another photographer about like, sh- she yeah. w- loves to travel. And I was like, where's the first place you want to go post, you know, pandemic or COVID or whenever it feels somewhat normal. And she was like, Antarctica. And I was like, I'll go with you, you know? And I was, yes. I was like, I got the cash. I got the time. Yeah. my wife, yeah. my wife, we're there. And like, that sounds awesome. It yeah. aligns with our values, you know, and it's, it's less about the, you know, putting it on the gram. It's less about all that <laughs> kind of stuff, you know? And, and, and uh, yeah. again, I only make money to serve the goals. So if I, if I do make a lot, it's like, Ooh. I, I want to serve that flexibility goal or like, Hey, we want to yeah. buy that cool toy. Um, yep. you know, so that's really cool. That's awesome. What, uh, yeah, what's a normal day look like for you right now? Now that you, I think you're off paternity leave. Uh, like what's yeah. that normally look like for you right now? Day to day. I think you have, yeah. even have some contractors, which I think too, like you, you're yep. ready to outsource early. You're ready. So probably to serve the personal goals, you know, to have more time. 
Yeah. So what's a normal day yeah, look like? Yeah, it's it's about having more time. It's about, you know, finding people who are better than me mm. at stuff. And somebody told me, I got a lot, a lot of uh, coaching when I was like uh, in the church world. Yeah. And this old guy who worked at a Fortune 50 company, and he was retired and living in, on the Oregon coast. He told me, his name is Chuck. And he told me, uh, Adam, uh, find the best people you can and let them make the decisions. And I've always loved that. I was like, okay, like I, I didn't understand it at 24, mm. but uh, I kind of get it now. This is also the, where the printer is. Oh, I love one it. One of those millennial <laughs> that have, has a printer. We're leaving it in. We're uh, leaving it all in. <laughs> <laughs> okay, awesome. Yeah, we had to get a, a thing. That's right. Um, yeah, so I don't know. For me, like what does a regular day look like? Uh, again, thinking of like our values, uh, yeah. like our family values and things. Like we get up uh, these days in pandemic land, I'm getting up at like six every day yeah. and get drinking a cup of coffee. Declan wakes up lately. He's been waking up at seven. Fingers crossed. He keeps doing that, yeah. which is awesome. Um, and yeah, make coffee, make breakfast. We eat breakfast together as a family. Uh, the goal is to get me in the office here by eight. So get ready, work from eight until uh lunchtime which is like 11 30 mm. maybe 12 yeah uh take lunch and then i come back and i usually work until like two or three and then declan is waking up from his nap and, and actually while i'm working a lot of times because we have a baby i'll like wear mave because it's a good way to connect with your kids yeah. baby wearing yeah baby wearing dads good thing um so we'll I'll, like try to wear her and we're, we're connecting that way and then uh declan will wake up from his nap around 2 2 30 and we'll watch some Paw Patrol right now. Awesome. Uh, we'll do that for half an hour, uh, hour maybe. And uh, then uh, Kel we, Kelly and I do, we, we, since we work from home uh, right now, well, she's not teaching, she'll go back to teaching uh, soon, but um, sh we'll, we'll commute. If we, we need our commute time. We're realizing like some time for just us that doesn't involve kids or diapers or, you know, yeah. uh, poopy butts and all that stuff. So yeah uh kelly when he when declan wakes up she'll go on her commute which is like a walk and then she'll work out nice. and just take an hour for her yeah. and then when she comes back we like pass the baton and uh i'll go for a walk yeah and then try to do some yoga and that kind of thing so that's what i'm doing right now it's working for us and then by that time it's like four o'clock it's time to make dinner we're early dinner folks so we make dinner eat dinner together and then it's like a little bit of family play time take deck to the park if it's nice out yeah I'm telling you this in detail because this is like every day is like, it's feeling like Groundhog's Day at this point it. in pandemic. It's like, like this every day. <laughs> and then uh, bath time is at seven. No, bedtime's at seven. Bath time's at like 6.30. Dex in bed by seven. And then Kelly and I have a couple hours together to like watch the Blazers play or something or hang That's out. That's awesome. And then uh, bed by like nine. And I tell you that in extreme detail because like you start to realize like if I were working a uh, eight to five somewhere or nine to five somewhere, you know, yeah. and commuting an hour each way. So I've like, I had an opportunity. I could have like yeah. gone and done some marketing work and communications work in Portland, yeah. about an hour commute each way. Yeah. Well, that's 10 hours a week yeah. on top of the 40 or 50, they're going to want me to work. Yeah. And if I tried to like take the snapshot of what our day looks like and uh, fit like any kind of like meaningful family time in it, it would just be so squeezed. You know, we'd just be running, running, running all day. Yeah see our kids for maybe I get home at what? Six o'clock. Yeah. And I'd have what bath time, bedtime deck would be out by So I'd have an hour a day, yeah. no park, you know, like it's maybe someday, I don't know. Yeah. I, I'd be open to working a job again someday, but right now it's just the flexibility is just too, yeah. too good, man. Yeah. It's too good. Especially pre, pre like traditional school, whatever year that starts, you know, like kind of stuff. It's like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. take advantage. And it's especially, you know, I, I business Adam is thinking too, like it's more profitable if the kids stay with us for now uh, until true. it's uh, daycare time or whatever, you know, depending on yeah, COVID guidelines, huge. all that stuff. So like, that's awesome. And it, it sounds like, um, you know, outside now, will you have, will those hours change if you have like a session or a shoot or like, have to, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, yep. so like, absolutely. Yeah. So I had, uh, I had a, a work trip, uh, a couple months ago to California yeah. and we, again, we just try to figure it out in a way that works for our family. Like mm. I would not be able to shoot the amount of weekend weddings that you do. Sure. Like I, I would not work for us. Kelly would hate Murder me you. Yeah. if I yeah. did that. Um, 
just because we really try to share the load of we call it the uh um oh it's like the mental load of, of running our family mm. we really kind of try to break those responsibilities up especially with the kids sure. as they're squawking and she's being so kind to take care of them right now <laughs> um they uh yeah. So I, like when I went on that trip, she had her mom come up and help a bit, a um, little bit extra because yeah. her mom was about an hour away. Yeah. And um, when I came back from that trip, I took a couple of days off to like be with the with the family yeah. and help out and give Kelly some time to like recoup and recover. And just acknowledge that like it took a lot. Yeah. It's a lot on her to have to be with the kids. Uh nonstop. That's like the hardest job. Like some guys will like work, you know, 60 hours a week at their corporate job and be like, I don't know how my wife takes care of the kids, you know, like, it's the hardest job ever. Like, no, it legit is really hard and you should help her, Yeah, you know, like, and you should let her have a career too yeah. and fit kids into your career as well. And not, you know, hundred percent, not just take that for granted. So yeah, no, hundred percent. I feel like, uh, you helped me, uh, be grateful for what we have now without having kids. It's like, okay, I yeah. take care of my wife and I always check in with her and make sure she's okay. And like 2019, yeah. I know we talked a lot where it was like, I did like 55 flights, you know, 60,000 miles. Um, I was gone a lot, but I was making, yeah, I was making more money than I'd ever, ever dreamed. We don't, yeah. we don't know if we'll ever do that again. It was one of those things sure. where it was like, Hey, uh, Michael Phelps can't make it for some odd reason. We're going to have you come do this thing at the Olympics. Well, you're going to say yes, even if it's going to be bad. You're like, all right, I'm swimming, baby. Let's go. Let's <laughs> and, go. Uh, Give me some flippers. Yeah, and it's uh, and I checked with Sarah and made sure, you know, oh. hey, are you okay? Is this, is this fine? You know, what do you need from me communication wise? Um, but yeah, it'd be ten times harder, I mean, a thousand times harder with kids. And so it's like, and it's not that kids are a burden or anything like that, but it's like I, you know, okay, let me. What can I do now? And if we have kids, I know things will have to change a little bit, and I and I'm willing to do that. So it's always been like. Even pre marriage, I went even harder than I do now. It, like I, mm -hmm. I have like a, a deductive system, you know. That over time, I plan on like yeah. slowing and running things down, and um, yeah. and it's one of those things. But again, it's like the intentionality of my life and and goals and it's all about intentionality. And yep. that's huge. Yeah, because I, I think so. Like, oh, go ahead. I was gonna say yeah. Like the whole goal for me, I found, and I've gone through different seasons where it was just uh either scarcity mindset that, okay let me make as much money as i can because oh my gosh i don't know if it's gonna work and and then two th seasons like now to where it's like you know i i totally forget where i was gonna go but yeah it's like i wanted to make it work for for my life at that time and if i can then like why not so yeah dude absolutely and and to like the scarcity mindset thing well there's two things we'll come back to the scarcity mindset thing yeah but um one is like with having kids now and work like Bring, bring, I can bring my kids along when, when I can't, you know, yeah. like I, whenever, so like on Friday, I'm going to hang out with a friend and shoot some photos. Yeah. Um, but I'm bringing deck with me because Friday mornings are like Declan daddy days. Like I, I don't work Fridays, yeah. so I, I take Fridays off and, uh, Friday mornings, I, we always like go get donuts and then like go get pizza or something for lunch, yeah. hang out, but I'll just bring deck. And like, I wanted to hang out with his friend and, and talk some camera stuff and shoot some photos. So we're going to do that together yeah. like there's no reason that it has to be like no my kid can't come that's the cool thing about creative too is like well he can just model or something for us you know yeah. it, it'll be uh it'll be a good thing but the scarcity mindset piece um is man that's such a trap that's such a trap yeah. think that, that there's like not enough out there to take care of or like that the, somehow like the universe uh, isn't going to take care of you and your family yeah. and that there's not going to be, it's just a whole trap to, to slip into. And I, one thing that a good friend of mine here told me uh, when I was like, man, I don't know, like, is this thing going to work? Am I crazy for trying this? Like I got a family, I got a mortgage, I got, yeah. you know, things. And I, he's like, well, you know, man, if it doesn't work out, you were going to have to figure out something anyway, you know? Yeah. It's like, like you can either figure it out now and just like bail hit bail on it. Yeah and figure something out or you can give it a shot. And then if it doesn't work out, figure something out later, you know, yeah. like and that's so good. Like it, it reminded me of like, uh, there's, um, an essay that, uh, Emerson wrote called self-reliance mm. and there's this paragraph and I don't have it memorized, but it's about, uh, always, you know, somebody who, who's, who can, can try, you can be self-reliant if you, if you try are willing to try a, a whole bunch of things and no matter 
if it, if it goes well, if it works out or not, you can always land on your feet, try again yeah. and just reset and not feel bad for yourself or that like you're somehow ruined by, you know, not succeeding in your first enterprises is, um, as it goes in, in the essay. That's something I've taken to heart as well. It's like, you can always just like land on your feet, yeah. settle, not take it personal, try again, get dust yourself off. I mean, because at the end of the day, and this is one of the things that fuels this whole thing is realizing that like, nobody's going to come and save you. You know yeah. what I mean? Like if things aren't working out, yeah. uh, you know, if, it's Adam's if you have a kid on the way, like nobody's coming. Like the cavalry isn't coming, dude, yeah. with like their checkbook. Like you're going to have to like get up and figure out like, okay, like what can I do? Take an honest assessment of who you are, and what your skills are yep. and your network. And how can you, you know, talk to your network and, and see what the options are, you know, yeah. that's huge. That was huge for us. Yeah. No, I think that's it's super big. It's like, you know, you have to, that's how I feel is like one you and I have done, you know, so much leadership things, I think through college and working at churches and stuff mm-hmm. like that, where leadership was like this buzzword, but you know, a thing that we cared about and you growing up in a military yeah. family, I was a boy scout for 10 years, you know, whatever. And it's like, you are always hearing this leadership thing. And, and ultimately depending on who you learned it from, at least for me. And I think you feel the same way is like, yeah. if, if somebody under me or working for me, or working with me is having a, a bad time or they do something wrong or they communicate something uh, like, it's on me, you know, like uh, there's, there's an element to where we want to be like, Hey, they made this mistake, but it's like, I try really hard almost aggressively to be like, okay, do I need to communicate this better? Do I need to show more examples or all that kind of stuff? And, um, and it's like, cause I'm in charge, you know, like my name is on the door, you know, um, not really cause we work at home, but, um, you know, so it's like, there's so much, um, it's, it's almost a balance, but it's hard to teach that uh, to people who are starting out to say, Hey, you might not feel like an owner, but you're an owner and owners take ownership yeah. and this is your thing. Yeah. And you have to steward this now. Like you can't think yeah. of, Oh, I'll, I'll steward it when it's better. You know, it's like, you have to right. steward this now and you might not see, you don't feel any shade, but you're planting a tree right. and you got to just keep going. Oh, I like you know? that. Yeah. And then yeah, someday yeah, yeah you'll feel the shade and that shade is I get to walk with my boy or I get to hang out with my wife or go to Iceland or go to Antarctica or buy a motorcycle or whatever. And it's like, that's, you gotta, you know, the forest trees kind of thing or whatever that is. So it's, um, the other thing too, what I, what I've learned too. And, uh, I'm, I love that you use the, the, everything we just talked about as like a, a mental like push, you know, one, there's the casualness of like, Hey, well, if it doesn't work out, you just figure something else out, you know, and, um, that kind of stuff. And I think too is like, I think scarcity mindset, what I've seen, and even in myself, there are days when I'm like, ah, you know, I wish we were making more, especially COVID, right? You know, like sure. oh, dude, it, yeah, it, it made sure. us all go, wait, what? Um, you know, and yeah. figuring that out and like, yeah, mm-hmm. we've lost tons of money and all this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And I think I felt, I feel really good about it, ironically, because it's like, okay, but I know that we'll survive hopefully, or like, I feel really positive mm-hmm. about it. And, um, but scarcity too much time in scarcity uh i feel like scarce i'm I'm working on this but it's like scarcity and burnout are friends like i Mm -hmm. I think they're like close cousins and it's Mm -hmm. because when i i don't mind working hard you don't mind working hard when it's time to work hard and it fulfills you to get the other parts of the life that you want you're you're not burnt out because you're fulfilled you know and i'm working on this idea of like being fulfilled making what I want, doing what I want, you know, and, and, you know, and it's, um, and the making is to serve the personal needs. Like, Hey, I don't have to work 10 hours a day. I get to work six hours a day or five hours a day. Or like me yesterday, I didn't do anything. Um, but it was like, I had nothing to do, you know, or I didn't have to, it was like, that's the beauty. Uh, absolutely. It's winter, you know, like it's (laughs) slow. It's the slow time, you know, like January, isn't January the worst month. Yeah. It's just, and now we're in February, but it's still, man, just winter time is slow. Yeah. And it gives you that flexibility. It gives you that flexibility, man. It's huge. Yeah. You were saying about working, about working hard, like that trip to California. Like I probably worked like nearly 72 hours straight. It was just, it was one of those, like those work trips. You condense it down. Yeah. I drove there, yep. which was 12 hours. <laughs> yeah. I pack it all uh, in. Yeah, man. You work, work a full day and drive back, you know, you're like with the client and you know, trying to wine and dine a little bit yep. too while you're down there. And, um, 
Yeah. So, I mean, it's, yeah, you work really hard in those moments and then, but you take time for rest too and realizing that we're, uh, you know, we're human beings. Yeah. Yeah. At the end of the day, we're not robots. Yeah. So. No, totally. That's the hardest thing for me in, uh, in my business is telling myself I'm not a robot. You know? And, yeah, man. And like, to, no. you know, Sarah's been really good having a wife that's like, Hey, it's okay for you to rest. It's okay for you. Yeah, man. Like, uh, oh, it's so important. I used to have, uh, such a guilt with, uh, you know, I blame Mark Driscoll for this. So that's very inside, ba- <laughs> inside baseball for us. I, re- I blame him for a lot of my weirdness, but, um, is, uh, I always look down upon like video games, you know, and mm. was always like, oh, yeah, like those are waste, wasteful. Those are people people who do that. Like you could be doing so productive mm-hmm. um, even to people, you know, maybe went to college where they were like single. It's the weekend. They have no responsibilities and they, yeah. they want to have some time or they want to connect with their friends back home or all this stuff. Uh, and I'd be like, that's that's ridiculous. Um, but then p- p- pandemic hits like a year ago and a buddy of mine was like, hey, do you want to play this thing? And I was like, yeah, I would do anything for social interaction right now. Um so if it's killing zombies or planting trees, Dude, I'm in. And uh, for sure, man. And Sarah's been really good about it. like Adam. That that's rest. That's fun. Like if that brings you joy, like that's yeah. cheap, easy, safe, fun for you. And uh, and like that's how I connect with Denny and a few of the other guys almost every weekend. Oh, cool. If I don't have a wedding, you know. Um, yeah. And it's one of those things where right now in the season, that's the beauty of what I can do. And then when we hit, you know, if things go back to whatever normal looks like, let's say later this fall. And I have triples every weekend. I'm not playing any video games, <laughs> you know. Like I, I am trying no. to make up for lost time, um, and you know that works out. You know what? Uh, I want to ask you as, as somebody who's been building this thing in the kind of newer world, uh, yeah. you know, or is new to you. Like what? What is one of those mistakes that you recognize, or one of, one of those things that you always think uh, back and you're like. I'm glad I do it this way because that one time I did it this other way and it screwed me over or it didn't go well or like is there is there any uh, mistakes that you think about often and not in a bad way but you're like this this is why we do this thing now this way. Oh yeah, I mean that's that's a great question. Um, I can think one thing instantly pops into mind. I think of the time when you got married and I was in your wedding party and we went out to lunch and up until that point I thought good for Adam. He's doing that creative thing. He's probably making 20 grand a year, just grinding it out. Like, good for you, buddy. This is great to hear. So I like, well, like, I was like trying to be nice. I'm like, buy you lunch. Yeah. And then you're like, you know, we were talking and he's like, actually, I'm doing like amazing. And you tell me like how you're doing. I was like, good Lord. Well, I will forget it. And then I saw Sam Hurd show up to your wedding yeah. in a Tesla. Yeah. I was like, okay. <laughs> all right. And this is before like everybody's driving Teslas now. This is like, yeah. okay. Yeah. Didn't realize you're doing so well. Um, and I, I remember like in that moment, I was like, oh, well, maybe I'll just be a wedding photographer. Like I, that seems to be like the thing to do yeah. I, instead of like honoring the all of the experiences that I had had in life yeah. and the opportunities that I'd been given and really taking a step back and saying, like, like what do people pay me for? Like, yeah. what's the th- like, what's the what can I bring to this that might be new and unique? It's like trying to just like. Uh, be Adam Mason Jr. Mm, like isn't yeah. the isn't the path forward. Yeah. Um, you know, everybody it's gonna look a little bit different. And yeah. in this the world that we live in, it can look a little bit different. And I would say even just probably in the last couple of months, have I been able to like figure out like like what kind of like products and our services do we have like pack ser- service packages does Joy Ethic have mm. that are unique to us yeah. that you know are reasons that somebody should should work with us. I've only been able to really kind of wrap my head around that as we've made money, like sure. probably in the, in the last couple of months, as I've been able to sit back and think about it um, and figuring out, like, I don't have to be a wedding photographer. Yeah. Like, that's not, you know what I mean? Like there's all kinds of ways. So like what makes the the most sense and we've, we've honed in what makes the most sense for us. Yeah. Um, but that was a mistake early on where I was like, Oh, I've just got to do it this way sure. you know like okay so i yeah. need to go if i'm not booking 50 weddings a year then i'm not doing it yeah. you know like i suck you know it's like well i mean i try that i, I learned some things from shooting some weddings yeah. that were great for me and then um realized it wasn't going to fit into our family's life the way that i wanted to so coming back to our values yep. and making decisions based on our values 
I had a lot of therapy where my therapist told me like, look, man, like people are not happy in life and are burning out and depressed yeah. because we make decisions all the time. They're out of whack with our values yep. and uh, our personal happiness. Like we don't do the things that will obviously make us happy, mm. like spending time with our families and things like that. And we, 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 we like, we'll go out and try to serve our ego story, right? Yeah. Like I got to keep this image up looking good, this glittery image of myself that I'm successful and well-liked and on the right track. And my parents are proud of me and all this, you know what I mean? Yeah. When really all that can just be a trap. And it's like, well, like, no, what do you, you want to do? What yeah. do you value in life? You get one shot, you know, at this wonderful thing called being alive. Yeah. And how do you want to invest your life? Cause at the end of the day, when you die, it's not going to matter how much money you have in the bank. Yeah. I mean, as long as you have enough to like, you know, take care of yourself and things. Sure. But I mean, you know, if, if you get to buy that yacht or not, yeah. it's not going to matter, you know. Yeah. But if you love your family, if you get to spend time with the ones that you love and you get to own your time, yeah. and invest it in the way, like maybe you'll get like really into crocheting in your 70s, dude. And like, that's your thing. And you got time to do that on the front porch and just not stress. And yeah. That's a good thing, man. That's a that's a win. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, that's awesome. I think that's a that's a big thing with kind of talking about you seeing me and Sam, two people who mm -hmm. are in the grind. I was I was like about to hit my my what is I you know would be the stride until COVID. Sam was in his stride when he shot her wedding, and it's like, um, one, Sam is a celebrity, so he has like extra. I feel like he gets a little extra juice on uh than uh, the other kids, but yeah, like we, it's very easy to see us and be like, okay, yeah, I want that. I want, you know, mm -hmm. what this affords me, all this kind of stuff. Um, and at the same time, you know, our reply, and Sam would say this too, and you, you know this now, is like, hey, you can have a fulfilled life right now, you know, and um, like, and, and still make um, what I would say is quote unquote good money, you know, or money that serves your other values, your retirement or whatever, the ultimate, like, hey, I can do whatever I want with my time of, you know, not having to work or whatever. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, and again, like that's a, uh, that's the goal. And it's, um, yeah. and all that's to say, it's like, I'd rather do that doing something that I kind of like than anything else, you know? Absolutely. And like, you don't, you didn't have to sell your soul to get anything you wanted. Dude, not at yeah. all. And that reminds me of, uh, when I first moved out to Oregon, I got like another pastoring job, like yeah. at, on the Oregon coast. Yeah. And a lot of Californians come up to the Oregon coast to retire. Cause your mo uh, money will go further. Yeah. It, so they, uh, we had a lot of these like retired executives in our church. They are, you know, they'd made a lot of money in California. They come up living in Florence, Oregon yeah. of all places. And let me tell you, man, they'd done it. You know, they'd done it. They, they had conquered corporate America. Yeah. They'd made millions of dollars. They show up to retirement in just this beautiful place. And they were so bored. Yeah. All of the things that had made them successful in life, yeah. their drive, their ambition, their uh, competence, that didn't go away the day that they quit their job and retired. Yeah. It was all still there. And so Kelly and I learned this at like 23, 24 when we're, work, we're, we're there. Like we saw how just bored they were. And we thought, well, like if that's what retirement is, like mm. that's not for us. Yeah. Like I would love to be, and this is what I hear you saying a lot is like, I would doing work that I love doing and that's really good work in the world as long as I can do it. And as I want to be doing it, you know, yeah. like not be necessarily tied to like, I have to make, still be making X amount of dollars yeah. like in my sixties or something, but be able to scale it up and down, have flexibility, maybe go on more vacations, right. move into different kinds of, uh, of roles. But um, retirement for us, our goals for retirement are more around just the flexibility we want, we want to have. Yeah. And, but still be able to be like doing work that feels really vital and good to us. Um, just in a, like a really reduced capacity, you know, yeah. I don't have to be like hustling for UPS or something, you know, in my retirement age, you know, yeah. like that's really sounds really like difficult. Like if that's what you want to be doing, awesome. But you know, I'd still be loved to, to be engaged in this kind of marketing communications work. Totally. Yeah. Into the future. And I mean, the whole point too, is like, that'll still be, that's your choice. And it's, it's, it's like, it'll mm -hmm. be, totally. and I think that people, they, they're scared of the possibility, right? Like they, mm. like, I think there's a, you, you yeah. see the great beyond and I, I'm, we've talked about this all the time. I'm passionate about people taking their passions full time and living the life, mm -hmm. living the life they want. And it's like, I don't think you would ever be like, Hey, 
taking photos and pretty pictures or in, or in video is my passion. But like creative storytelling, serving community, serving, you know, mm-hmm. having an impact on the world using this particular set of any set of skills that, mm-hmm. that also serves your personal, you'd be fine. And it's like we I'm a big encourager of like the great beyond has a place for you if you want it, you know, mm-hmm. like just go for it, you know, and uh, yeah, and I think that like kind of like your friend as simple as your friends saying, hey, you'll figure it out or like no like go for it it could be really bad you know it it could be awful i remember a we're in oregon for your wedding and uh i got an offer for my first job out of college and you said yes and and mace photography was not at the time i didn't feel comfortable with it yet right i wasn't ready to make that leap and i had nothing pushing it uh over the edge kind of like you had you i know uh you know, my baby's under the car. Mama's mom got to lift it up. So she's going to get supernatural strength. I, I didn't have that moment. Um, I was very risk averse at that time and uh, maybe still am. Uh, eight years ago, nine years ago. Yeah. And uh, it's like you we're looking at the offer from this uh, this job. It's my first job out of college. Um, you know, seems like a nice deal. It's a, it's a good place. Um, it would be a cool full time gig if that's what I wanted to do forever. Right. Um, Correct. And, and what's on paper, though. Everybody in my community is like, duh, yeah, take it. Like, I went to school with 140 kids in my major, and all of them wanted that job. And the mm-hmm. guy that got kicked out from Sussex County, Delaware, is the one that got it. And so part of me is like, okay, yeah, we did it. And you said, uh, we're in, like eating breakfast in the hotel or something like that. And you said, uh, what would you sell Mesa Photography for right now? And I was like, what? And uh, and you said, is this worth trading? you know, all that time and that, that effort to try and try and make this happen. And, uh, and at the time I was like, yeah, um, <laughs> you know, and there, there could have been some other things too, where it was like, I, I had no direction, you know, uh, outside of that. Mm. And other than if I had, I always think about that. Like if I'd stayed in Pennsylvania, if I got a head start on Mace photography, really pushing rather than having mm. those two years at NCC, um, but at the same time, you know, obviously it's like hindsight's 2020. It's like I got to meet so many amazing people, learn a lot of stuff, like all this kind of stuff. Yeah. But it was uh, I think about that all the time. And then something I, I've mm-hmm. never talked about this publicly, I think. But um, while at that job, you know, I'm working with 70 people. Right. So you always have office politics. You have that guy there, or girl there. Is, you're not a big fan of you or whatever. But I had, yes. it was complicated because I had started my business before taking this full time gig. And so coming in there's like this like oh we, we followed adam on instagram why does everything have his logo why does everything have his name why why is he always pushing people to go to his website to see this blog of some couple like doesn't he like his job that he has here you know and and those are valid questions right if you're an employer you want to make sure that those are sure. that you have good answers for those um but they'd kind of say it in a negative connotation way like oh the sermon video didn't have adam's logo on it <laughs> and i'm like <laughs> and i'm like no of course not i'm not i'm not gonna you know uh do something like that like that's not what i want to do but there was like this yeah. you know uh you know condescension you know pro- which you know i don't do well with yeah. so you know there's uh <laughs> no <laughs> <I'm> like <laughs> no you don't <laughs> and so i literally think about that every time i put my name on something or i brand something um yeah you know, and going full time and like, um, and I think they're my, my mature, nice way when I'm when at a healthy place thinking about this thing is that like, there's a job for everybody. And it was awesome to see, to work in an office, to get the experience, uh, you know, awesome people I worked with, good friends that I still have to this day. Um, but there are people there who did freelance on the side, right? They'd always make extra money or whatever. And they're like, oh, I got this really big gig. And I always be like, but what if you could do that full time? You know, and uh, like, what if you could, you know, if you only need five clients a year to survive? Wow. Why don't you do that? Um, and they'd always talk about almost leaving. They'd always talk about, oh, I, I have this big client or, oh, this is going to be the thing or I'm thinking of doing this. Um, and those people are still there, you know, and and I don't dog them for that. Right. Those are the smart decisions. You, the, they got to do what serves their personal variables and personal values. And, um, and I was like, okay, I, I feel satisfied with where I'm at, you know? And like, we're happy. We we live in DC. Um, you know, we could live wherever, but it's like, we live here. We bought a house. That's freaking insane. Um, and again, for you, like, you know, my story, I, I'm always ready. Uh, most people listening to my story, like I'm ready for the shoe to drop. 
if, if it, like I'm ready to go Same. to go get a real job yep. and be like, that was really cool. Dude, I'll be out there delivering Domino's pizzas in a heartbeat. Yeah. Like, <laughs> love that company. Yeah. Like they are, you know, yeah. like you don't get fancy with it. You, this is what what you're saying reminds me of this. And is that totally reverse mm. on camera? No, it's good. It's can you read yeah. it? OK, that's uh, that's the thing, man. People hedge. They hedge their bets. They're like, I can't, uh, I don't want, uh, I would do it if, uh, mm. uh, and they him and they haw. I've done the same thing. Yeah. Like I've, I've been pushed into this and decided to, oh, okay. I've been moved forward. I'm going to stay here. And ah, uh, this is scary enough. Yeah. Um, But man, like if people hedge, like I, I try not even to have clients that are hedging in their business mm. or their because it can just, ugh, it can get, it can turn ugly quick, man. Yeah. We, we can talk off. That's air another about that. lesson right there. <laughs> Dude. Oh man. That's a huge lesson. Yeah. If, if somebody, if this is just a little, you're helping somebody with like a side passion project. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. Um, danger. Will Robinson. <laughs> um, uh, don't, yeah. Don't hedge. If people, you got to put your whole heart on it. Like, uh, those, that doc rivers, that doc rivers, Netflix special, man. Oh man. It's so good. His coaches rules for life. And he says, if you want to win a championship, you got to put your heart on the line. Mm. And that is just hit like hit like so close to home for me. Like if you want this thing to work, if you want your business to work, yeah. you're going to have to put your heart on the line. You have to risk getting hurt. You have to risk failure. Yeah. You're going to have to risk, you know, sleepless nights, being anxious about it. And for a while, like, is this thing going to like, am I crazy? Yeah. You know, like even thinking about going out, you're going to have to risk. You have to put your heart on the line and do that. But you know, to quote that famous, uh, you know, if you don't risk it, you don't get the biscuit. You got to risk it to get the biscuit. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to put it out there. You got to put your heart on the line. Yeah. And if you don't, it's not going to work. Yeah. It's just not like it's just not 100 yeah. percent. I always think about uh, this is like I don't know if this is working towards like a video or a TED talk or just like an inspirational thing. Yeah. But it's like and it's nothing crazy, but it's exactly what we just talked about. And it's like, how bad do you want it? You know, like whatever it is, right? Because again, yeah. your thing is like, okay, I got pushed into this, and then, but uh, here are my values. If I can make this work for my values, that'd be cool. So you're like, screw yeah, you. yeah I'll, I'll shoot some photos and some videos and do some storytelling and, and use totally. use my skills. And it's, fun. Um, it's like, how bad do you want it? You know, Mason Photography, we talked about this, you know, we talk about everything, but I was like, Mason Photography is my 19th job, you know, mm. from cutting grass for Ken Dunning at 13. To, yeah. to now it's my 19th job and it's I wanted it I still want it you know like yep. like uh it's kind of funny listening to two of our friends so my wife Sarah and then a good friend of mine Denny who also got to see the Miss photography startup is um mm-hmm. Sarah will say something like ah Adam downplays everything he does or Adam will never really brag about what he likes to do or whatever and or you got to get him on a good day to want him to be pumped about what he's doing um and uh and she's like I just wish he would be prouder of himself and, and Denny goes, mm. Denny, who kind of knows where it started, was like, that's how he keeps his edge, <laughs> you know, which, <laughs> like which is it. fair. Like, I, I don't actively think about that. Like, oh, this is my edge. Right. But I like I wake up, yeah. I wake up every day and I'm like, I couldn't define exactly what it is. The definition changes every once in a while over the past 10 yeah. years. But I'm like, I still want it and I'm going after it. And um, yeah, man. it's like, you know, the we always joked mm. about the Mace Photography Empire. And I'm like. The empire has places that I haven't seen yet. They're built. They're ready. I just got to go, you know? And, um, yeah, and I, for sure. And I see that though for everybody. I see that though for so many people, Dude, you know? And it's like, absolutely. If they would just get out of the boat, you know what I mean? Yeah. Not to like, <laughs> not to like bring like biblical analogies yeah. into this, but you know, like, yeah, you just got to get out of the boat and you're not going to walk on water unless you get out of the boat, man. Yeah. No. It, too many people stay in the boat because it's safe. It's warm. It's at least it's floating right now, you know? Yeah. It's like, well, that job that you thought was so always going to be there for you, it's not necessarily always going to be there for you. You know, like things change. Yeah. But if you can just have the faith to take a step and then take the next step and be like, oh, this is scary, yeah. but I'm going to do it. I'm going to keep moving forward. Um, it One day you wake up, and you're like, oh, it's OK. Like it's we're, we're doing it. We're getting there. Yeah. 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 No, it's a. Uh... It's it's still weird. Even for me, I'll wake up and I'll be like, oh, wait, like, yeah, this is my job. I am, you know, like Jay-Z. I'm not a businessman. I'm a business man. (laughs) 
and uh and i think about that all yeah. the time and it's it comes with good things and bad things but it's like okay yeah like for sure this is what we're doing and yeah. it's um and it's awesome you know like that's, that's our end thing we're all saying and this is like guys you can build a job you want and it might look a little unconventional <laughs> at parties when somebody says what do you do um but when they see your instagram if you- i still don't have that down <laughs> can i tell you that man i still don't yeah. uh, somebody asked me that the other day we we're out to dinner and uh they're like what do you do and i told them i was like into marketing i was like and they were like oh they were like, well it's not really yeah it was so cleaner when i was like i'm a pastor you know yeah, yeah. you know and and now it's like i'm a photographer mm. i own my own business well, what's your business well, i own a creative agency what the heck is that yeah you know like I have, yeah we're working on it man it's just keep keep trying yeah eventually maybe maybe 10 years from now you know we'll be able to have we'll know what we are you know yeah I own this thing and I don't really t- fully have language around it. We're trying. Yeah. And uh, we're just in the middle of that messiness, figuring it mm. out. And you can be there too. You know, yeah. like anybody can do this. It's just a matter of not hedging, not being okay with looking a little silly while you're learning something new. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's probably my number one advantage in life. <laughs> <laughs> I've never cared. Right. So it's like, you know, yeah, or, I care a lot. That's really hard for yeah. me. That's really hard for me. Yeah. That's been super hard for me. It's been really humbling. Yeah. It's uh, it's, it's tough, you know? Yeah. And I think too, it's like, if you put out work that is bad or isn't your best, or you had a bad day or it was, it was rainy on wedding day or whatever, it's like, uh, it can be kind of embarrassing. You're like, ah, oh, it's not, you know, not the same or whatever. Um, but like, yeah. you know, you got, yeah, you got to have to be okay with it and, and dive in. Um, this reminds me, I'm going to send you a link to, uh, a Sean West podcast on, uh, your pitch, <laughs> Dude, <laughs> which I'm still working on, but, it. uh, it's, it's helpful because it. you never know. Like yes. there's people who just want the flat answer and you're like, I'm a wedding photographer. But if, if yes. you're like, I, you know, you're trying to think of like the fancy frilly way like there's six seconds 30 seconds and two minutes so it's like you know i'm a wedding photographer who coaches other creatives you know or uh there you but go. then you yeah. but then you can kind of build on it and just be like you know i'm a i'm a storytelling creative who helps people find their passions and take those full time you know or whatever like you, yeah like it's like who do you serve and and what do you do for them um you okay. know kind of stuff or I like, that. Or like i help people in one of the most stressful times of their life eliminate fear and create connection and help people become fulfilled yes. uh and who they are and who they're yes. becoming so that'll preach let's go no uh. yeah, absolutely <laughs> man as i'm eating my slice of pizza trying to tell the server that yeah. you know like okay i was just want to know if you wanted another beer or not but that's good good for you that's the, no. that's the downside is when they don't want the big answer and you're like uh. you stand up on the chair no i'm in marketing it's fine it's fine <laughs> yeah <laughs> Well, then he thinks you're a sleaze ball, right? And you're like a snake yeah. oil salesman. Like that's not it. No, no, no. It's like yeah. You should just tell tell people I'm a data harvester. I I harvest. I'm a data. I harvest all your I'm data. data yeah, I was it. Yes. I was in the social dilemma. I am the reason they made it. Yeah. <laughs> How do you feel about it? Awesome, man. Well, dude, uh, so good connected. This is exactly what wow. I thought it would be, which is awesome. Cool. And uh, I hope people find value, uh, friends, family, and and obviously the listeners yeah. find value in like. You know, the main things I see when I see your success now is it's not too late to start and change something else. Your business serves your values. And like, you know, I think finding that sweet spot is different for everybody. And if, you know, I think people get nervous and they're like, comparison creeps in and they're like, I want to make 200K. You don't have to make 200K to have what you have and what you have can be worth more than that. And then you could make 200K and it's still be fine. But like, you know, there's, it's, it's a balance. And it's, you know, I think it's like, again, based off values and all those kinds of things. And, um, I'm really proud of you. I think you're kicking butt, uh, excited for joy ethic. It means a lot. I have, a I I don't think you could see it in the shot, but it is, I have your note card. Let me see where it's at. I think it's right here. Yeah. I have your note card. It's stuck in a, in a Facebook, uh, Rubik's cube that I got from shooting from them. Dude. Uh, awesome. and, uh, just as like a fun, personal, fun reminder. And, uh, mm. and yeah, so rooting for you. Where can people go to find out more about Joy Ethic? Ask you questions, yeah. talk more about you. Because I feel like uh, I'm a guy with zero kids, right? So it's, uh, you know, some people might feel more comfortable talking to you and say, hey, help me out. How do you do this? What are some of your personal boundaries? Yeah. That kind of stuff. I would I would love to talk to anybody. Yeah, you, you can just find us on Instagram or any any of the socials at the Joy Ethic. Um, and or go to thejoyethic.com. Awesome. So. So all you got to remember is the joy ethic and you can get there. So I love it. Awesome. man. Just start pushing. <laughs> just start putting in stuff. Or if you go to just Google it, you know, just, I don't know. Something will show up eventually. Yeah. yeah. If it doesn't have his face on it, it's not the right thing. Uh, it's not the right thing. then. No. <laughs> I love it, dude. Awesome, man. Well, Hey, yeah. great to have you on and uh, we'll talk soon. Thanks.
Guys, thank you so much for checking out the Bearded Hog. It really means a lot. If you can, leave a like on the video. If you want to see more videos, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for notifications on when new videos come out immediately. Have a wonderful day, guys, and keep being awesome.